Uh, many of you know that the Florida Department of Transportation, or FDOT, also plays a key role in this policymaking portion um, here in the state of Florida. FDOT has been tracking this discussion uh, for several years now and have established working groups and cohorts to facilitate conversations around the state with the purpose of us being ready for what's coming next. Mr. Nick Harwell is here today to provide us the state's perspective. Nick, if you want to head up this way. As the airport planning manager with the Florida Department of Transportation's Aviation Division, Mr. Harwell brings experience in both contract and project management administration oversight. Nick has led several statewide projects as project lead, including airport master plan guidebook, advanced air mobility, COVID-19 impacts on Florida airports and the airline industry, Florida Aviation Economic Impact Study, the Florida Aviation Professionals Academy for elected officials, as well as the Florida Aviation Professionals Academy where Nick is a subject matter expert and serves on the instructional team. In his current role as airport planning manager, he has direct oversight and acceptance of all master plans associated with Florida's public use airports. In addition to his conditions as a Florida certified contract manager on various multi-million dollar statewide project, Nick maintains membership in the International City Managers Association. And Nick's graduate degree from the University of Florida is in civil engineering with concentration in transportation and is undergraduate in business administration. Please welcome Nick Harwell. Thank you so much, Alice. I want to say to uh, Tampa International Airport uh, and the leadership here, thank you so much for hosting us today. Uh, and it is so good to be among friends, acquaintances uh, from the state, from the federal, all the way down through the state level. Uh, some of my cohorts and uh, FDOT colleagues here that are with me here today, friends, uh, OEMs, uh, and those of you alike that I'm not met personally, but hope to engage with you later. Um, again, as I said, it's great to be with you. Thank you, Alice, so much and your team for putting this together. And thank you for letting me be here today. Uh, I have traveled long distance to be here with you. So uh, it has taken me quite the journey to get from L.A. to here. So I probably have driven the longest. Uh, driving all the way from L.A. to get here. And uh, for those of you that don't know what that L.A. is, that's Lower Alabama. So I'm pretty sure you can tell that uh, I'm not from L.A., but uh, I am so delighted to be here with you today to talk about the perspective uh, as it relates to the state of Florida. So what are we going to talk about today? Uh, just uh, the introduction, the agenda, just a couple uh, topics to keep us on track uh, with regards to time. Uh, we're going to talk about the introduction to AAM, Advanced Air Mobility. I'm uh, very sensitive to uh, acronyms. I know Alice talked about that earlier. Uh, we at the Department of Transportation have a lot of them. Uh, I have a two-time uh, tenure, I would say, with the Florida Department of Transportation. Uh, straight out of college, I worked in District 3, and I worked in the construction side of the house. And so uh, probably week two, uh, being with the Department of Transportation, they sent me to a course, uh, and uh, it took me about day two to figure out what BM actually stood for. I had my other thoughts on what that stood for, but it is actually an acronym for benchmarks. So I am very sensitive to educating and to making everyone aware of what acronyms stand for. So advanced air mobility, advanced air mobility in Florida, and as well as the next steps. So what is advanced air mobility? Uh, all of us in this room obviously are curious and uh, excited about advanced air mobility uh, within the state of Florida, respectively. And so uh, I'll let you read some of that, and you'll all receive a copy of this uh, presentation as well as some of the other speakers, I assume, uh, from today's uh, 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 conference. And uh, so Morgan Stanley, uh, as you see there, projects a $1 trillion advanced air mobility market by 2040. Uh, including numerous hurdles to overcome. And I would like to say, Carrie, thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, I was a little bit nervous because I seen a slide that looked exactly like mine. So I'll try to just advance that slide real quickly as we get there. 
Uh, but obviously, there are a lot of constraints associated with uh, advanced air mobility, and we're certainly uh, recognizing those with regards to lithium battery constraints, uh, any of the regulatory environment. We're going to talk a little bit about that today as well as the charging infrastructure and all the grid capacity associated with, with that to include the public demand. So from the state of Florida's perspective, uh, we looked at uh, this introduction and our entry into market, and we feel like that these are some of the uh, different versions or types of EVTOL aircraft, the multi-copter, uh, the lift and cruise, and you'll hear more about some of that as the OEMs come forward today, later on today, uh, and talk more about that. But uh, obviously you can see the various versions and ver various designs of the, the uh, advanced air mobility or EVTOL aircraft that will be introduced into the state of Florida. And we certainly uh, see and note that uh, some of those are already uh, in conversations with some of the uh, airports within the state of Florida, respectively. So again, Kerry touched on this a little earlier as far as some of the use cases for advanced air mobility, and certainly we echo that with regards to air taxi, air cargo, and of course, public service. And so uh, there will be a lot of conversations around all of these three different use cases uh, as we move forward within the state of Florida uh, and the introduction or entry into market in the state of Florida. So again, early, uh, early, earlier on, I guess you would say, uh, Kerry talked about infrastructure development. Uh, it's really critical to the state of Florida. The early stages of AAM will rely on existing airports. So let me tell you why it's important and what's so uh, powerful, if you will, about what Florida has already to offer. Why wouldn't you have, or why wouldn't you consider having advanced air mobility or EVTOL operations at an existing airport in or around an airport? Now clearly, let me make something abundantly clear. The last thing that we want is we want to uh, infringe upon the airspace or any activities or operations that are currently going on at our Florida airports. That is critical to us. But we certainly embrace the opportunities that are presenting themselves with advanced air mobility within the state of Florida. So I was speaking earlier to someone before we got started today and got kicked off how that, you know, from an economic development background that I have, it makes all the sense in the world to be attracted to an airport within the state of Florida. And why not? Because we already have the infrastructure. When you think in terms of an airport in the state of Florida, uh, you don't have to uh, provide utilities to that facility, right? The, the, the utility is already there. You have the water. You have the wastewater. You have the, you have the natural gas if necessary. You have all of the, the utilities that are already there exist at the airport. So why that makes so much sense to us is because we have some incredible airports within the state of Florida that offer some of those same opportunities. And some of those conversations, as we all well know, are going on right now as we speak. Again, Carrie talked about the briefing. I'm not going to get into that today too much necessarily because she's really already addressed that at its highest level. And we were certainly thankful for her today for coming and being with us today and talking about that. So from an infrastructure development, Carrie talked about that. That is outside of her purview. And in essence, it's outside of the state's purview. So we're going to rely heavily on the local political subdivisions to provide the design criteria for the infrastructure. Now, let me just back up here and just say this. From a state's perspective, and as it relates to heliports of, of, of current status, we, the state of Florida, are already positioned well to be able to license those type of facilities. So from a state of Florida, FDOT, we're prepared, we're ready. So we're just kind of waiting on things to kind of materialize, you know, obviously the bills, all of that that has to come together. Let me, I pulled this up uh, and I wanted to just kind of bring this up. I actually wanted to make sure that I got my information correct. But I just want to make a disclaimer here. And I want to use the phrase, it takes a village. There was an African proverb that said, it takes a village to raise a child, to provide a safe and a healthy environment where those children are given the security they need to develop and flourish and to be able to realize their hopes and their dreams. I'd like to borrow that for the sake of advanced air mobility. It is going to take a village. It is going to take every one of us in this room 
and outside of this room to make this a reality for the state of Florida and for the United States and globally, it will take us all talking, engaging, involved at the same table. So it's incredibly important that we're all here today. Thank you so much for being here. And so as we move forward, as we prepare for the legislative session, committee meetings coming up, the session beginning, it is important that everyone in the uh, AAM, the Advanced Air Mobility Arena, is communicating, talking, engaging, having conversations. From the working group, and I'll talk a little bit about that, I'll tell you what happened. So as we, at a state's perspective, started our initial launch of advanced air mobility and integrating that into the state of Florida, we began to look at it as we all have from a crawl, walk, run perspective. I'm sure you've heard that terminology. So you can see there are different versions, whether they're pilot on board, autonomous, whether it be all electric, whether it be a mixture of hybrid, if you will. There are a lot of different moving parts here as we continue. But having everyone at the table, having every person engaged, with buying into the concept of it taking a village to make this a reality, to raise this, to move this, to elevate this, having people like you at the, at the table and engage in those conversations is going to be a product that produces the success of advanced air mobility within the state of Florida and abroad. So again, some trends, some timelines, OEMs, and of course, you know, their entry into market. You can see that, and again, you will receive a copy of this presentation. This was the slide that scared me because Carrie, I think, probably had the same slide. So I don't know if they say great minds think alike. I'm glad to be partnered with Carrie to be able to say that. I don't know that mine is as great as hers, but I'm glad to be in the same arena and certainly share the same stage with her and specifically to share the same slide with her today. So I won't talk too much about that because she's very, she's covered this very well. Again, some of the advanced air mobility OEMs. Uh, I've had the wonderful pleasure of being able to sit. I did last week with some of those representatives from some of the OEMs. You'll hear from them later today. The Matthew Brofman, of course, who is here with us today. Uh, Matthew Land, who is here also, I think, with uh, the o different and various OEMs. So you'll hear from them later today. But these are some of the uh, current OEMs that are having conversations, engaging with partners and stakeholders within the state of Florida that are looking to uh, provide early entry uh, into market in the state of Florida. Again, I said earlier, why rely on existing aviation airport in infrastructure? Begin, because it provides a public perception of safe aviation. When you think in terms of aviation, aviation has a very strong uh, safety record, correct? So uh, obviously we had bumps and bruises along the way, but for the most part, aviation has a strong safety record. So advanced air, mo air mobility doesn't necessarily have that platform as of yet. So it's a paramount. It's, it's so paramount and it's so important that we get it right uh, on, the, on the entry into market. It's important that we get the bills right. It's important that we get safety right. And so it's paramount that we take a very slow, back to the crawl, walk, run approach. It's very paramount that we take a very slow go, slow go process to get it right not only from the regulatory environment, certainly to the safety environment that we get it right. So why does these airports, why would this airport, why would other airports within the state of Florida and abroad uh, make, make sense and why rely on that? Because it meets, obviously we have requirements from the state's perspective, from the Fed's perspective that we already mandate and have in place. So it's clearly obvious, an obvious target for advanced air mobility. Obviously, there are multimodal connections, and so there'll probably be others that'll talk about that, and that's a heartbeat of mine to make sure that all the modes are conversating and connecting. So FDOT's approach initially, we, on our first phase, the first launch of advanced air mobility, we took a, an approach to identify what we refer to as a compatibility map, a roadmap, if you will of advanced air mobility. And so we surveyed, we, we, we launched an email out uh, from the state's perspective on those interested airports and parties that would be interested in partnering with the state of Florida on a roadmap, 
Uh, clearly, there was a lot of engagement, a lot of excitement around advanced steering mobility, and as such, we had to shortlist that list down. So we did so, and then we provided what we refer to as this advanced air mobility uh, roadmap document. Uh, we have companion documents. Uh, you can get that, as Carrie noted, the website from the Federal Aviation Administration. If you'd like to look at the very bottom of that slide, uh, the fdot.gov slash aviation slash advanced air mobility, you can receive and pull down and download all the information associated with this portion of phase one of advanced air mobility from the state of Florida's perspective. Again, this is the, compa the uh, compatibility considerations that we looked at when we talked about introducing Florida into the, to the um, uh, Florida Mar advanced air mobility, I should say, into the Florida market. Uh, we reported, the report was prepared uh, and produced 34 public use airports, again, all of which you can get straight off of our website. Happy for you to take a look at that. So moving into phase two of that study, we developed what is referred to as a working group. A working group, and clearly the purpose of that was to uh, take a strong, hard look at the current status of uh, aviation and development and the opportunities to integrate advanced air mobility into the state of Florida, specifically the deployment of EVTOLs and EVTOL aircraft within Florida. Uh, and so we began to act as working group members around the state as representatives to partner with AAM, OEMs, uh, and bring forward this idea of introducing advanced air mobility into the state of Florida. So there were four working groups. This is phase, our phase two approach to our position and our direction from the state of Florida's uh, perspective. So we developed working groups, and so we identified focus areas, and of course you can read those. Uh, obviously public education is a huge uh, part of that. I think that it's very critical and we'll talk about that in just a moment. It's very critical to have uh, local engagement, correct? Because as Carrie noted, outside of her purview, outside of our purview, however, having the local political subdivision divisions involved in those conversations, because ultimately at the end of the day, those individuals, those elected officials are the ones that are going to have to deal with any kind of public outcry, correct? So they're the ones that's going to be on the hook. They're the ones that's going to be looking at constituents standing in front of them in a city council meeting, a county commission meeting, or what have you. So uh, we looked at focus areas, infrastructure and zoning, another critical part. Uh, and that's something that has to be uh, initiated on the local level, not at the fed, federal level, not at the state level system planning and access, airspace and safety. And then drilling further even down into the categories, we looked at the legislative, <laughs> it blinked out for me, the regulatory environment as well as the advisory and local government. So from the working group, and there are some of those members that are here today that uh, participated in our four working groups around the state of Florida. Again, here are some of the members, representatives that were part of the working group. Airports, some of you are here today. Cities uh, within the state of Florida, operators, OEMs, other state agencies, as well as our partners and our friends at the Federal Avi Aviation Administration. Those meetings started right here in Tampa. The first meeting started here at Tampa International, moving over to uh, Orlando, from there over to Palm Beach, and concluding down in Miami. But from the working group, and this goes back to something I said earlier and something that Carrie also mentioned, uh, from the working group, one of the things that uh, having a background in city government, I understand that sometimes uh, local political subdivisions and city organizations, municipalities or whatnot, they tend to lean on state and federal, federal regulations, right? So they're going to kind of wait. They're kind of sitting on the fastball, if you will, for a document. So that was one of the recommendations, I think, in my working group or my uh, uh, breakout sessions that I mentioned, that we needed a guidebook. We needed something to kind of provide that guidance. So from the working group, uh, the idea was birthed to have a guidebook, a guidebook, if you will, to kind of help and walk through the, the local political subdivisions, the municipalities, the counties, as they begin to plan and prepare for land, uh, land use, all the zoning requirements that are associated with integrating advanced air mobility within their local uh, political subdivision. 
So that kind of leads me to my next steps, and I'm trying not to cut too much into Brett's time. So some of the next steps for us from the state of Florida's perspective is such. Uh, phase three, which we're currently waiting for approval to move forward with, uh, is the creation of an implementation plan, as well as to develop an outreach work plan. The outreach work plan is basically a byproduct of phase two, which was uh, the working groups, which will basically then become advisory. So we're gonna look to uh, lean on some of those same members to join us in an advisory group, and then move forward into phase three. And finally, as we engage in the committee meetings and we prepare for our legislative session, it's critically important that we understand that there are, you know, a lot of interests uh, at the state's uh, perspective as it relates to uh, uh, political uh, figures. And so as such, we want to engage them and have them part of that conversation and possibly even join us on the advisory board. So that kind of wraps it up. Thank you so much. I apologize if I cut into Brett's time. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here with you today. We'll entertain questions a little later. Thank you so much.